Lord, you're able to remain here, be able to praise and bless you for what may be. If you hear your loss, here's an altar, carry your need, here's an altar. If you hear your need of a prayer, here's an altar. If you hear your need of a prayer, we're here for you. If you need a sense, we're all here for you. I just want to thank y'all for allowing us to be here another day. That's the I want to open up the prayer. I want to ask you to make you to open us up prayer. Sound test one, sound test two.
the anchor home Though the sails are torn
Thanksgiving season. Turn this mic down just a little bit, please. Uh, I do want to say this before we start in on the Word. Uh, if you got people that you've not been reconciled with, reconcile with them. Life's too short. And it's sad. I've been to a few funerals in my day. And here's one thing I've, I've noticed. Everybody's good when they die. Amen. What about when we're alive? Amen. So do that in Jesus' mighty name. I want to talk to you tonight about the Great Commission. The Great Commission and the reason a lot of people don't do it is because they don't believe that they've been given the ability to go do anything for God. Uh, if you got your Bibles, we're going to be turning back and forth to a few different places. Uh, we'll start with... Uh, Mark's Gospel, chapter 16. The biggest fight you'll ever have is the devil making you believe that you ain't got what God's already blessed you with. Amen. I said a lot of times people overlook happiness in pursuit of happiness. I'll tell you a story, it's supposed to be a true story. <coughs> There was a man and a woman, husband and wife, they sat down, they, they said, have you heard about the price of gold? And they said, yeah, it's just crazy. And said, so, well, what do you say, me and you, husband and wife, make a team and go out here and look for some gold? She said, well, it sounds like a plan. They sold their house and their farm and they went across the world in pursuit of gold. And come to a time to where they didn't find much that was broke. And they stopped and said, you know what? We got just enough money to get back to our hometown where we come from. What do you say we go back there? So they did with the last pennies they had. And just for kicks, they drove by their own house where they used to live. It was crazy. They had big chain link fence, barbed wire, and everything all around their old farm. <laughs> it's today known as Fort Knox. They were sitting on one of the largest gold mines in the world and didn't know it. You would be amazed with what you've got right now and, and amazed, amazing what you're looking for. What if I was to tell you everything you're looking for, you've already got it? <laughs> well, what if I was to tell you the very thing that you seek after, God's already blessed you with it. But we can't see it because we become almost as if we're not a thankful people. You know, we enter God's gates by giving thanksgiving. You know, God's blessed us. Ain't he? He's richly blessed us. But so many times we go through life looking at what we don't have instead of being thankful for what God has blessed us with. God loves a thankful people. It was the one leper that came back that was thankful. He got to go home. He got to be made whole. So that's what we've got to do is be thankful. For when the devil tells you you're not happy, you let him know you are happy. And when he lets you know you ain't all that in the bag of chips, you let him know that you are, amen? You let him know that God invested in you not to sit still but to go to the whole world preaching this everlasting gospel. Tonight I'm going to talk to the believers just for a little bit. Uh, but here's, here's what I want to share with you. I got a phone call this week. My phone rang and I said hello. And on the other end, they said, Jimmy, we're going to ask you to pray. My mama is tore all to pieces. I said, what is it, baby? She said, my, my brother just tried to hang himself and he was turning blue in the face. And, and we just cut him down just in time. And, and the sister, she got needle marks up and down her arm and, and she can't find the, and the mama's praying somebody to pray for her. I said, you know what? We ain't got to look for nothing extravaganza because we've already got it. God's already put inside of Ray the kingdom of heaven. When I accepted Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior, He and the Father made me their abode. So how long will we continue going through life 
out thinking that we ain't got what we should have. So therefore we can't do what we like to do for God because we ain't got it. Hmm. It's almost as if we think God writes bad checks. I promise you God don't write no bad check. If he said it, that settled it. When Jesus said all these works that I do, you can do greater because I'm going before the Father. He meant it. When he said lift your heads at the fields are wide, ready for harvest, but the laborers are few, pray ye therefore that the Lord of the harvest will send laborers into the vineyard. He meant it. But the biggest two reasons we have people not doing nothing for God anymore is one, they're lazy, or two, they don't believe they've got the commission yet. Oh, this is good, ain't it? Ah. Jesus, when he came here to earth, he came to seek and to save that which was lost. People was hurting everywhere around him. But I love what he said. We'll start with Luke chapter 4, if that's all right. I want all the believers to repeat after me. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He hath anointed me. Let's say it again. We want to say it till we get it. Amen. How many believe that the Holy Ghost is living down on the inside of you? How many believe that? You really believe that? That the Holy Ghost is right here? And then when he talked about from their belly shall flow rivers of living water, he spake of that Holy Ghost that's living down on the inside of you? The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me. <laughs> Do you know it's not just the preachers and the pastors and the babies' responsibility to give this gospel out? We almost as if we believe that only them got God's hand laid on them. I'm sorry, but I have to give you some good news. When you accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, He moved in. We, we are the kingdom of heaven. We, he said, freely you have received, now freely give. Look at the woman at the well. She didn't grab some problem and say, come here and look at this. She said, come here and see a man that told me all I ever done. And you know, that's our responsibility. There's this world out here that's lost and dying without God. They're drug addicted, alcohol obsessed. They're looking for answers in church. You have the answers. Amen. They're looking for peace. You have that peace. Amen. But until we realize who we are in God, we'll never do nothing for Him. You know what? A simple thing is a, hey, won't you come to church? I promise it works. That's Brandon told her. He said when Jim and him looked at him and told him to go to church, he needed to get his life right with God, tore him. Now he had a smile like whatever. But he looked me in the eye and he said, my heart was ripping out of my chest. You know something else has got me stirred up right real good? There's a man around this community right now died. He's on his deathbed and he's not been born again. Do you know that if he crosses over <laughs> before the, the Lord can get to him, he'll be in hell for eternity, not just for a day or two, but he'll be there for an eternity. We've got to shake hell's gates and let them know we mean business. Amen. There comes a time we've got to say, we've got to go after these people. But the biggest fight of the enemy is letting you know you're not ready yet. That's the biggest fight of the enemy is letting you know you've got to wait. And the devil will tell you this until the Lord comes back or until you die. Too much is given, too much is required. Amen. 
Do you realize what you've been given? When he entrusted you with his spirit, he gives you power. Amen. He did. And he gives you power over all parts of the enemy. Is this right? Am I telling the truth? He said, I watched my daddy throw Satan out of heaven like lightning fall from the sky. And he said, behold, I give you power over all parts of the enemy. And what kind of parts? All parts of the enemy. Nothing by any means shall harm you. What is holding us back from going the extra? <coughs> he give us power. He didn't give the devil power over us. He give us power over the enemy. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted. There ain't any brokenhearted people just in Martin County. You know, I've climbed to the top of a mountain today and I just sat up there and I looked across the horizon and I thought, my God, Martin County is a big place. And I wonder how many people that lives in Martin County, Kentucky tonight is brokenhearted. Jesus said he had sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives I make you a promise there's penitentiaries and jails all across this land but there's just as many if not more people in prison that's walking on the streets than they are behind the bars there is people held captive I'm talking about depression and, and all these different things out here that wants to grab a hold of you and hold you down you are free in Jesus name we've got to we've got to help them I said, you know what? I can almost hear right now a mama laying on the side of her bread bed praying out to God, God, please send somebody to help my family. God, please send somebody. Because they don't realize of themselves what God has put inside of them. It's so amazing to me the times <laughs> I drove down the road see somebody broke down side the road and you pray God send somebody to help them God did they passed them up now the nuts praying that God will send somebody else you know I love uh, when, when the priests come out and they're trying to shut the people up from praising God and all of a sudden Jesus looked down and said if I shut them up the rocks will start crying out we don't want nobody to take our place, do we? We want to do our part. So all we got to pray for is God give us strength because right here just in Martin County, I ain't got to worry about Paintsville. I ain't got to worry about Ohio. I ain't got to worry about West Virginia. Right here where I'm at right now, there's brokenhearted people. There's people held captives. And recovery of sight to the blind. There's blind folk in Martin County, Kentucky, and a lot of them drove to church tonight. To set at liberty them that are bruised. The people that's been beat down across this land. And to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Preaching that message today is the day of salvation because your tomorrow might not never come. You've got to realize that you have been commissioned. He said, now freely you have received, now freely give. It's so amazing that the people out here is looking for answers and the church has got the answers for their questions. And we walking around like... For some time I've been so scared of offending people. But you know what? If it comes to the place that we have got to offend people to shake hell's gates, we'll do it. We've got to come to the place that this has got to be more to us than anything else in this world. We've all got a heaven to gain and a hell to shun. We've got to open ourselves up and let them see a God that loved them so much that he laid down his life for them. The Great Commission. We've been charged. 
How many of you believe they have a, a good excuse that day why they didn't do anything? Well, God, I just really felt that it just wasn't my time yet. <laughs> Jesus would say something like this, my time has not yet come, but your time is already. There's not a time that I should look for in a time to worship the Lord. Always is a good time to worship the Lord. We should always be able to give an answer for that thing that lives down on the inside of us. There's people needing peace across this world. And they're not getting it in drugs and they've got to realize that right now. That woman with the issue of blood, she realized it when everything was gone and she still never had an answer for her question. And she knew that Jesus had, had the very answer she needed. But in Mark's Gospel, chapter 16, it says this. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. I know there's a lot of people runs around saying, you ain't got to be baptized to go to heaven. And, 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 and that's not what the Word says, right? Uh, the Word says over here, it says God's commandment all men that they uh, repent and be baptized in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Right? I think it's two baptisms. Because that fire, the baptism of fire, we have to have it too. But there is two different baptisms and I'm glad you brought it out. A lot of people say that, no, 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 it no, ain't. No, 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 no. Yes, it is. John said, I baptize you with water, but there's one coming to me shall baptize you with Holy Ghost and with fire. Now, Philip's out preaching the gospel. There's a unit coming along on the carriage. Y'all remember the story? And, and he said, uh, you know what you're reading? He said, how can I? Some man show me. He jumped up in a chariot with him and, and just starts busting it out for him the, in uh, the book of Isaiah, right? Y'all remember the story? Yes. Okay, then all of a sudden he said, well, see, here's water. <laughs> what for business being done? He took him down and baptized him in water. Amen. <laughs> and then John's boys are running around. And, and now they've all been baptized with water, right? John's all led them all to believe on Jesus Christ, right? Yes. Okay. And now he said, if y'all received the Holy Ghost. He said, we didn't know there was a Holy Ghost. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, the Holy Ghost just rested on each one of them. There is something this we needed. Amen. And I said, we fight against it so hard. But all we have to do is pray to God. He wouldn't confuse none of us, would he? No. I said, Amen. Amen. But he that is but he he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be damned. Why the world people wants to go to hell is beyond me, Tommy. I don't know. But you know one thing I realized that, and I was down in the church for this evening just talking to myself and I thought, start thinking about that man that's laying on his deathbed and will not profess Jesus Christ. Will not reach out for Jesus Christ. And the only thing I kept thinking over and over again that just kept bleeding my heart is once they get that, they'll never get out. Act tough, act macho, do whatever you want to. I promise you this, when they get that, I've thought so many times, you know what? It, it looks like God would just wipe us and create him somebody that would love him. Regardless of what they felt like. And I include myself. Then I got to thinking one day. The biggest fight we try to do, and, and the mommies and daddies in this church knows what we try to do. We try to get people praising the Lord. 
don't we? And that's, a, that's what we try to usher on. And I got to thank him too. <laughs> if God wanted to hear a real praise, all he could do is put his ear to hell. <laughs> 